Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your man, Corey. Welcome to the Digital Dash, where I'll be giving you guys tips on how to market your songs and get those numbers booming. Now today, I have a very special guest, man. My man, Keith Dorsey here, man. I brought him on to talk to you guys about some game as far as influencers and marketing and things like that, man. I know we talk about it on the channel all the time, but he's pretty much the guy I feel like could put you more into that world than I necessarily could. So with that being said, man, welcome to the channel, man. Appreciate you for coming in. Man, I appreciate it. I'm honored. Definitely be here. Yeah, Thank man. you. So um, just before we kind of get into the questions and stuff, can you let everybody know exactly what you do, um, kind of your background and how you got into it and things like that? Okay, of course. I love telling the story because um, it's super exciting. Um, really, I manage social media influencers. I represent them and I connect them with brands, people, artists. The biggest deal um, have been with artists. Mm -hmm. uh, my best friend is Robbie World. Uh, we've been knowing each other for like 15 years. Um, he started off as a music artist. Okay. Everybody doesn't really know that, but he won't tell you. He also has a music um, engineering degree from SAE. So he started to do uh, music videos. He became like a big, well, he stopped doing music and he started to do music videos. He became like this huge videographer for like indie artists, underground artists. And then from there, um, Vine came out, <clears throat> excuse me. And he became Vine famous because it was a platform where he could literally be himself. Yeah. Like lots of people came from Vine and it changed their entire life. So they started basically it was him and there was a group of other individuals as well that were from Atlanta. They came together and started something called the 44. Uh, that blew up in Atlanta. <clears throat> I started to um, manage them and their operations and it really hit when um, the group kind of wanted to go different ways. Um, I mean, everybody's still friends, but it's just, you know, different ideas, different careers, people just kind of just go different ways. He used to be behind the camera um, as a videographer. He, he would never really be in front of the camera. So I said, Rob, you need to be in front of the camera. You're funny. <laughs> and of course, a lot of his ideas, if you look at his, his page, is it's a little different, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's not accepted by most people who don't, who are not really as creative as he or think how he thinks so he did it and boom his instagram began to blow up the i gotta go was a sensation <laughs> it went viral he went from 100 from 5,000 to 100k within no time like he's uh heading over a million followers but with that um the career started to happen mm -hmm. the promo started to come and him being my best friend like of course we our circle we we take care of each other mm -hmm. now i've always been the one that will handle the business side of everything like okay keith can you do this can you do this for me because a lot of the creators just like artists don't like a lot of paperwork yeah. so you have to have somebody that they trust to handle that stuff for them or do it with them so i would just do it with them so um it just got bigger and bigger and not only that because uh, a lot of people say, how do you get all these influencers? They're really my friends. Mm. They really come into the, you know, to our network, to our circle, and we become cool, become friends. And of course, how I am, I want help. And they mm. ask me because they trust me. A lot of people go out and try to manage people and seek people to manage. I never did that. Mm. I literally just became, it was a natural thing. I became friends with them and they wanted my help. They, mm. they saw what I could do. They saw what I did with Rob. And I was like, can you help, help me do it as well? So long story short, um, how we started to really hit heavy with the music industry was um, a lot of Rob's skits, well, all of them, have music in them. Mm. His skits will get a lot of views. So just naturally, I guess people just have common sense. Just regular artists that nobody knows about say, hey, can, can I pay you to put my song in your skits? Because he was using generic music from Apple, mm -hmm. um, from like iTunes or whatever, and, um, and iMovie. So he did it, and it just began to hit. Now, as influencers became more respected in the music industry, and they, uh, a lot of the artists saw the power of what challenges can do, like um, whatever the big, I want to start naming, there's so many different challenges that come out, and they were blown up through in social media influencers. So the labels began to see that. Um, a lot of artists began to reach out. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you put this in your song? I mean, in your skit. And it elevated from, um, we went to a sneaker um, convention in New York. Okay. And there was a guy that approached us. He was like, yeah, I see you guys are working. I see you guys are on the internet. And 
I said, I want to meet with you guys after the event. So I was like, you know, okay, cool. All right, we will do that. So we get there and this top floor, some really cool building in New York, uh, nice restaurant. Everything was bought out. I mean, open bar. I was like, I'm, this is pretty dope. Mm. <laughs> like, who are these people? So they was brought out these cards that said 300 in red. And, and hoodies that said 300 as well. And I, at the time, I was like, 300? What is 300? I don't understand. Because, you know, I was just so detached from the music industry at that time. And not only it was just 300 um, ENT music label. Mm. And they was wanting to partner with us and myself to um, promote artists um, to, that are with that label and start doing some research. I was like, oh, my God, this is a big music mm. label, <laughs> 300. I was like, oh, dope. Was so around the time of like... Fetty Wapping. Um, yeah, yeah okay, all yeah. of them. And then we've done so many different activations. The, the biggest one was with um, Atlantic Records. I went, Rob and I went to Rolling Loud Music Festival. And um, we went through like King Vader and it was a, a influencer, uh, a house that they had full of influencers mm. that were promoting with, um, promoting something with um, Atlantic Records at the time. So I just did what I do best. I connected. I said, hey, I got a group of influencers. They're great uh, here in Atlanta. Um, he was like, sure. Here's, uh, I sent him my deck. I have a, what's called an influencer deck where I have all their stats mm. that I send to whoever who wants to do business. And he responded, it's like, yo, I love it. I got an activation coming up for you. Lot, those who don't know what activations are, it's like they're activating on the promo or they're moving forward with something. Mm. Um, so they was like, yeah, I got Shoreline Mafia. I was like, okay. It was like put together a budget. So I put together some things and I submitted it. It was like 10,000. Mm. And it was like, okay, it was, it's approved. And that moment I was like, wow, this is crazy. So they just, it was like our big, biggest budget at one time. Yeah. Um, and I was like, this is serious. So they did it. They loved the results. Um, and one thing they want to, they, they look for is um, for the streams to go up. Mm. And of course the, not, and also the exposure for the artists and also the in Instagram pages. So that was over and they came back with another like 15,000. I was like, this is serious. So I was like, y'all, we got to tighten this up. We got to polish it up. We got to make this thing happen. And from there, Atlantic Records, I'm a vendor with Sony Music Group. I'm a vendor with Warner Brothers. I'm a vendor with um, all of them now. Mm. And all of them, especially as they, as music becomes well, as influencers and Instagram becomes the, a more powerful platform, they are investing more and more into that. And mm -hmm. every now and then we get like a lot of different underground artists to um, to do promo, but the labels they spend on, I mean, we've done the biggest, I mean, we've done them, so all of them are big. I mean, we've done, it just kind of escalated bigger and bigger and bigger. Like we did Cardi B, we did Meek Mill, Gucci. Uh, <laughs> we've did a lot, a whole lot of artists. So. That's really how it started, um, and and like it just more opportunities just keep coming. Mm. Like you know, now I'm starting to really understand the music industry and how how it flows mm. just by my relationships with the labels and like I'm literally working with their staff. Yeah. Not only am I just they're just activating with us, they're working with me to figure how to figure different things out. How you can take a meme and blow somebody up. Mm. How you can take a meme video and blow somebody up. How you can take a song and not even tag the artist and it blows up. Just like the, uh, what's the guy with the Old Town Horse? Lil Nas. Lil Nas. Lil Nas. Yeah. I mean, he never knew that. Yeah. He was just playing around. And it just began to go. Now, I truly believe, based on what I know in the industry, you know, there is a little bit of imp implemented... Um, promo in that mm -hmm. as well as they see it expand but I mean that that is a great example of what influencers can do and what social media can do for for music mm -hmm. and for anybody now he got you know <laughs> everybody looking at him <laughs> people we posted it will smith Bill Ray, uh what's his name um cyrus um on it and it's just it's it's crazy mm -hmm. so that's a good example of what we do right there. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. So, um, kind of doubling back a little bit to the to the actual starting of the business process. Um, so, what was that process like at first of trying to figure out how to price your sales when dealing with these labels? Like, was that something that just 
naturally came to you or was a trial and error like, oh, this person was willing to pay this much so we know we can get this much? Like, how did y'all get right. to the point where you knew where the price would be and all your other clients? Right. It was really, it was just really how active their pages are. Mm. And we've always done promo. It, it started way before the labels. Mm. It started with just like different brands, like clothing. Really, number one was clothing companies. Mm. Um, postings for um, just anything, actually. So we just kind of saw and I really studied mm. the industry and studied influencers. Like, this is not just something that we're doing. This is something that I, I, I have really made into a business. So I studied, like a lot of people don't know about Robbie. Like he's very intelligent. Like he's actually a nerd. So <laughs> he'll tell you that he studies the algorithm of Instagram. Mm. He studies everything. So we, we analyze it together and we, we look at other people's pages. We see mm. what's going on. So we also see what prices people are, um, are pricing their stuff at. And we just kind of price ours based on the, um, I guess, the activity on the page and mm. how active it is, um, which is very important, especially with how the algorithm is every mm. now and then. And then we just price it a lot. There's a lot of influencers who price, overprice stuff, and mm. you really don't have to, to be honest. Like, especially, like we work with people. That's why we've I've gotten so many relationship with relationships with all these labels is because we work with them well oh this is atlanta record we can we can charge them ten thousand dollars a post you don't have to do that yeah. it's unnecessary to be honest you want long term you want consistent you want that relationship mm -hmm. not only did do they activate with us with music they, any concert we want to go to any festival we want to go to they take care of us mm -hmm. when we and especially with 300 when we're in new york like um, they feature a lot of influences in big artists' music videos. Mm. Um, when we're there, they treat us like the artists. They they take care of us. They make sure that we're we're transported in the black SUVs. So it's like, it's that type of stuff that we seek and that type of stuff that I set up for the influencer. Like we're flown out to different locations, vacation. Like they 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 can't take care of us because we don't charge them. Of course, we charge them based on their value, mm. which is important because a lot of the influencers they. They undervalue themselves because they don't know, yeah. you know, and I say, well, look at what you're doing. You're doing 60. I got a lot of 16 year olds. They're doing like 60 million impressions a week and they sometimes will charge people a hundred dollars on their page. I was like, no, because these people are making so much money because I know I, Rob and I own a backpack company that blew up. So I know when they post, you post that brand. I know that they're converting. Yeah. So, I mean, no, like you're, it's, it's. Nine hundred dollars to post on your page now, and it's and actually and they will pay it because they got the budget. Yeah, you know so. And another value. In, exactly. Yeah. So you just don't charge no hundred dollars for your page, especially, you know, for certain stuff. A lot of brands and a lot of the opportunities we don't even take, not just to be arrogant, but you know, it just they have so many now that they have to filter through them. Yeah. But the labels, like we don't we don't overcharge them. Like they come back. But yeah, that's that's really it. We I just polish everything up, and I it was trial and error as well, because um, I had to learn and I had to study mm. to go to the next level. So I was like, what is it? Because at first I was just doing it through without a deck. Then I realized with three hundred, shout out three hundred, shout out to Max at three hundred. But uh, it was like you need a deck. So I said I put together, just went on my my Mac on pages, and I. Ask them to send me all their analytics, all this the screenshots of this and that, and I put them on pay on. Um, I think it was like three pages at the time, and I submitted it to him. It was like this is great. I'm gonna send this out to different people, and I was like, wow. So I just been using that same deck mm. that I did on inexperienced. Like so a lot of people spend a lot of money on like media kits, which we were doing that, but we didn't stop there because we didn't, didn't couldn't necessarily say, oh, we don't have nobody to do it. I just figured it out yeah. because. Um, I knew what they wanted, and then I gave them what they wanted, yeah. and it's been working ever since then. Like, I mean, <laughs> okay. um, so let's say, let's say I'm an artist, right? I have this song. I feel like it's the next hit. I see one of your influencers, and I want to come work with you guys. What are some of the criteria that you look for, especially with the up and coming artists who don't really have, you know, like you said, the structure behind them to present everything in a professional way? What are the things that they should be doing to just make reaching out to you guys a lot smoother, and making you guys want to actually work with them? Well, to be honest, they just send an email, send a DM. Mm. Um, we respond to everything. If it comes to me, I definitely will respond. Mm. A lot of a lot of the anybody people DM the influencer, and their DMs are so full. They don't. They yeah. really don't really see it. Like a lot of people think. Like a lot of celebrities, 
be acting funny, they really don't because it's so many messages. Even Thousands for my people, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Even for myself, like I can't even respond to everybody. Like, and then sometimes I open it and then something else comes in. It's just crazy. But send a DM, send an email. Emails are always checked, of course, which is most important. Numbers we had. Well, my number used to be on my Instagram page. I had to take it down because people would call looking for the influencers, which for no like fans. And I was like, this is becoming very serious. I have to take my number down. So I have to literally it, take it down from my website and just do email only. But mm-hmm. if you just email, um, is there any type I, of like quality criteria or anything? Like? To be honest, um, not really, because we don't really the way that, especially the way that they promote is very natural mm. like Rob Rob just put the songs in his in his skits mm. and um, a lot of the dancers they dance to the song to be honest we've gotten some really talented people we mm. haven't really saw anybody that had music that sucked and yeah. honestly today in this day and age some of it sucks and it stays it still have a fan base yeah. um, I always say start with a budget mm. and um, say this is how much I have and then we'll come back and say, this is how much it costs. Um, and then we work, we work stuff out, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, typically what Rob is right now, his p- per post is like fifteen to $2,500 a post. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we work with people. So if you come to me and say, hey, I want to break it down within this amount. Like, I want to do this every week. We got people that do stuff monthly. Like, mm-hmm. they say, okay, cool. I want to do $700 a month. I said, okay, okay, cool. Well, I'll break it up. Or I have micro influencers that can promote as well to make your money worthwhile, and and we'll we'll make it happen. So it's really just I would say just start with a budget, and have it ready mm. to go, um, because there's so many um, DMs for people who are ready to go, and then the labels come with big budgets, and sometimes it's like a month campaign, and we can't do any more promos. Yeah. So it's always like be ready because we can knock it out. Like Rob's page, well not his page, but his skits, he at least at least always have about, I would say about 30 to 40 skits that have not been edited yet. So all he does, if you're an artist and you come to us, we'll say, cool, what's the next skit, Rob? And he'll say, okay, cool, I got one. He'll listen to the song Mm. and he'll just hear what the song is saying, what it's about, and he'll pick a skit that it best fits. Now, there's another way you can do it is you can make a skit centered around or create it just for the song, mm. which is a little bit more money. The third thing is the artist can be featured in the skit with the song, which is more money again. Yeah. Because now you're, you're getting, which I kind of like because now you're, you get that facial image uh, exposure and you also get the music exposure at the same time. And it also helps the Instagram page uh, for the artist to become active, to mm. get followers, which is very important. And there's a big secret nowadays that a lot of the labels want you to have a big following before they even look at you, which yeah. is it's weird, ready. but if you have a lot of followers and your music suck, they can blow you up. Mm. You could be very talented, but you don't have a good following or, or like a uh, campaign going, they're going to tell you to get that going first. Mm. Or if they really believe in you, of course, they can create that. They'll start to, to um, create that industry plant type of stuff where they just pay for the promo, pay for lots of influences, and you're good, you you have a good image as an artist, you know, you're going to grow anyway. Yeah. So, just have it ready to go. Okay, know? okay, cool. Um, and I want to touch on something else you, you brought up too, you brought up micro-influencers, and that's something that, you know, it's something we've talked about on the channel, like trying to tell some artists, like, you know, sometimes you don't have 1,500 or whatever. Robbie, you maybe can find an influencer with 8,000 followers mm-hmm. that only takes 50 and, you know, they'll be able to work some magic with that. So are there instances where, or are there instances that you've seen that it's better to go with micro influencers over large influencers? Like, would you recommend someone going straight to the big ones if they can or starting out with the micro influencers? Right. Well, the first thing is, because a lot of the micro influencers, we have a micro influencer um, uh, look at me winning. Mm. Um, he's his page is, is is growing, but he his impressions and his activity on his page as if he had uh, like two hundred three hundred thousand followers. So you have to always ask for the impressions on their page mm. because if they're getting you know a million impressions and they have you know twenty five thousand followers, that's still good yeah. compared to someone who has a million followers and their page is super dead and inactive. Yeah. Like, don't don't look at the followers so much. Look at what how active their pages are. 
Also, swipe ups. Mm -hmm. Swipe ups are so powerful now because one of the most important things as an artist is you want your streams. Yeah. Everything's about streams. So you you look at the story. If they have you know ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand um, story views, you select the promo or not only that you do it very natural they just vibe to your song mm. on their story and do the swipe up that'll help you as well so you just kind of kind of play around with it it don't always have to be a page post or on a big artist page there's a lot of micro influencers who are like i work with a lot of the up and coming influencers and they're and and, and it's good too because you can build that relationship with them while they're small mm -hmm. and then they'll respond to you and you and they know you as an artist and the next thing you know, especially in this day and age, these kids are exploding. Like they one day they're at, you know, 40, 20,000 followers and in two weeks, three weeks, they're at 300K. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you it's very good to start with them. So it's, always look at the impressions. Always look at the impressions on the story views uh, before you spend your money. Mm -hmm. um, and also you, sometimes you don't even have to look at the impressions because a lot of them may not want you to see it, which all my influencers are open when it comes to their pages because they're legit yeah you know their 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 stuff is organic you can look at the likes and look at the comments and now you can tell based on the ratio of likes and comments that how active their pages their mm -hmm. pages so you just kind of got to do your research and compare everything for 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 your brand like music is a business yeah as an artist like it's a business for you. So you have to approach it as a business. So you have to study the influence, to study their pages, you know, study the music industry and, all, and, and look at things on another site. Like a lot of the music that's being blown up right now has been done from the social media, yeah. unless they're super big. I mean, even Cardi B uses the internet, uses Instagram. She, she knows she knows how to do it yeah, she and it's, 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 before she grew up. Yeah. exactly and it's it's very strategic and if you look at what those other artists are doing just copy that's all you gotta do just copy and think don't look at don't be entertained by it but look at why did they do that yeah why did cardi b post that at this time why is she posting this and then every other day she posts this to get active yeah. and then she drops or why artists troll for a full week or do something stupid or say something crazy and now they in everyone's mouth and talked about it in the media then they release something yeah. there's a reason why they do that yeah okay okay um so with i want to touch on something else too so i feel like within maybe the past couple of months the most that influences have really been talked about was after the fire festival thing right like that was i always say that that right there in my opinion was an example of a really well influencer, really well done influencer campaign. The event just went bad. You know what I'm saying? The event just went, just went yeah. to shit. So, uh, are there things that you do to like protect your clients from like making sure they don't put them in, in like brand damaging situations? Or uh, how do you how do you guys filter out some of those opportunities as well as opposed to just not you know jumping at everything that could work or maybe couldn't work? You know? Right, right. Which is pretty interesting because I was just talking about this fire festival last mm -hmm. night with a, with someone. And we were just flown out to Mexico for seven days. And it was influencers from Australia, influencers from, the, from um, Europe that were working with this particular app company. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to them because the trip was amazing. So, <laughs> but we were all like, like kind of felt kind of crazy because we've never been flown out to Mexico for spring break and everything was taken care of. And all we had to do was promote. And then when we got there, there was two other uh, really big influencer girls. And it was like, you guys, I think we're going to be kidnapped. I think we're going to, this is another fire festival. So all this was going through our head. But we had already done the research on the company. Yeah. So sometimes you really have to kind of research and not just promote anything. As an influencer, you just got to like look at who it is. Like yeah. start, do your own research. And if you see that they have a good track record, um, it's okay. Yeah. You know. But stuff that's not there, like you have to like, if someone is going to do good business, you got to make sure that it's there. And also, especially with brands, because you can promote a brand and then that brand cannot, let's say you promote a clothing company and you keep promoting, but this company is not sending stuff out on time or they're not sending stuff at all. Yeah. Now you're going to, you're the image yeah. of that company. So they're going to come to you. 
they ain't gonna look at the company because you are the influencer. They respect you. They buy because you said yeah. buy. So it's best to just kind of really just be like a customer. So you want to Google, you want to um, research, go on um, reviews, look at the comments on the person's Instagram page. And there's another scam that's going out that a lot of influencers got um, messed up with with these shoes. So basically, they they pay for the post. They um, say, hey, promote. They put the shoe on there, like this, to promote a page that sells shoes. And the people will pay for the shoes, and the individual will never send the shoes. Mm. They they get scammed, and then the influencer will get scammed because they'll dispute the PayPal mm -hmm. transaction, and and everybody loses out. Yeah. So it's like you gotta really study how to protect. Like a lot of my influencers, I do invoices for everything. I said, don't send no money to my PayPal. Don't I don't yeah. we don't do business like that. We need an invoice. I, and I actually literally spent hours on the phone with PayPal, especially as they were, um, even PayPal itself, it's a lot of merchants, the influencer thing is new for them. Yeah. A lot of influencers call, I do Instagram promos. They don't, I'm yeah. like, Instagram promo. They don't, it was new for them. Now yeah. Instagram kind of, I mean, not Instagram, but um, PayPal, PayPal, a lot of mer merchants kind of understand it now. So they was teaching, they taught me what you need to do is create an invoice in that invoice in the description this is a service number one there is no shipping required um all post all posts are um final there are no refunds basically saying because a lot of people say if they because a lot of times if you post it people think they're going to get the right uh guarantee on um the right uh, they're going to always get a lot of activity but it's not always like that mm -hmm. you know so basically i just make sure that they're protected the invoices are um, are taken care of as well Okay. Okay. Another thing I do, I do kind of want to get into is let's say for the person out there who's aspiring to hop into the same thing, someone who, cause like I said, when I met you, you were probably one of the first people that I physically met that told me I, I run a social media influencer agency. Like I, I see it online all the time, but I had never personally met anyone that does it. So I don't even think that's one of those things that like a, a lot of people know you can, you can get into it. Like, hey, these celebrities, these, not even these influencers that you see, they need people on the back end running things for them. So how would you advise someone else who wants to do it to kind of try to step into the same space? Really, to be honest, you have to be good at, um, you have to be sociable, mm. and then you have to be good at handling business and executing stuff the right way. Um, also, with a, obtaining the influencers or attracting the influencers, you really just have to be good at what you do. Because yeah. like, I never seeked out to do that. It was, the, the part that I was just good at what I did and they respected me and they could trust me. Mm. And they um, and they said, you know, even like the really big influencers, they, even if I don't necessarily manage them, they will allow me to represent them. Mm. Cause like, let's say we'll go to, like Rob goes somewhere and he's with someone with a bunch of other influencers. I'm not there clout chasing or saying, oh, I'm finna, I know I gotta get with him. No, I'm not doing that. I just do, I focus on Rob, and they see how well I do with Rob, and they and they they, they see that Rob trusts me, and they say, "Hey, bro, if you ever have anything, mm. I'm available for you. Here are my impressions." So you just really got to be a, a cool, dope, trustworthy person. Don't be all in their face, because influencers and celebrities they don't they don't like that. Yeah. You know, don't be just doing too much. Just be cool. Just be natural, and they they're gonna know like your talents will bring you before great people. I truly believe that. And and then get with people that that's, that's going to trust you, and and then they'll just ask, yeah. you know, they'll say, hey, can you do this for me? That's always happened for me. They always ask. I've never said, oh, I'm finna, oh, I gotta get this person, I gotta do this person. No. And if you do, it's a way to do it because mm. you could, you know, you have to start somewhere, and then you don't have to start with no big person either. Like we started small. All the influencers I work with, they started off small and mm. they just blew up, and I just kind of was with them the whole entire way so it's really just make sure that you have all your stuff together make sure you show people what you can do and it results is what's gonna sell it mm. you know you stop talking so much because a lot of people they just talk too much I can do this I work with this person I work I never tell people what labels I work with mm. I don't I don't ever do that you know until they ask yeah you know or until they they see on Rob's page oh I seen you did this. Was that a promo? And I said, yeah, it was a, it mm. was a promo. And, I, and I'm open. I don't walk around and say, yeah, you know, you should work with me. I, I work with this company, that company. I work with all these labels. Don't do that. It's really unnecessary. Just be cool. Just be natural. And what you do, if it's good, 
they will see that. Yeah. And then word word gets out. Like I have so many people in my in my DM right now asking me, Hey, can you manage me? Can you represent me? And I really can't honestly do it. And I apologize to everybody who does that. But I have to stay focused on my core group. Yeah. You know, and uh, once I stay focused on them, it, it, it word gets out. They say, "Wow, you're doing a great job." And people pull me to the side who I never really talked to. That they see us at events and they go, "You are doing a great job with Rob." Mm. And I would say, "You know what? It's really not me. It's it's them because they're the talent. They make me look good mm. because they're the talent." Now, what I do, I just kind of pull it all together. Mm. Okay. Uh, are there ever times that you encourage them to? Um, I guess it's kind of doubling back, but I just thought about something as you were talking. Uh, mm-hmm. Are there ever times that you encourage your clients to like test out new waters on other platforms? Like, have you ever talked to Robbie? Like, hey man, I know your Instagram is lit. Maybe we should try some stuff over here on TikTok. I know your, you know, your Twitter is lit. We should try to build up your Snapchat. Do you let them kind of centralize themselves on like one or two platforms? Yes, that's critical. You mm-hmm. always have to be in front of your client. Mm-hmm. I'm always in front of them each time, looking at what everybody else is doing. Yes, like Rob's whole de- ordeal, like he's getting to YouTube now, mm-hmm. very heavy. Like, you know, I'm making sure that he's at events, mm-hmm. celebrity events, making sure he's, we have a PR right now. Um, and uh, shout out to Brandy Storm, <laughs> you know, um, and making sure that that's not just about Instagram because you don't ever want to put everything on one thing. You want to be on everything. Like we have relationships with Triller. I'm mm-hmm. trying to find, figure out a relationship with TikTok, like like not just a relationship just on the app, but the people who run it. Like yeah. I, me and the trailer people are like this now with our group. And whatever we need, they take care of. TikTok is next, uh, but yeah, just making sure that he and his coach. You got to look at different sources of income. Mm-hmm. Like I got a another influencer who's she has a hundred k on Triller right now. Her videos are getting like four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand views. Like she just did a thousand dollar Ghana promo from uh, from three hundred. They paid her a thousand dollars just to put one video on Triller. Mm. You know, so that's another stream of income. Instagram is another stream of income. YouTube is another stream of income. Um, doing um, he also does um, like he show up different places for clubs. He really, we don't like to do that, but <laughs> I really hate it too. But just going to clubs, promoting that, uh, it's just all streams of income. So you got to look at you know the streams of income and focus on that and not just put everything like life is beyond Instagram like getting on different movies um, like he's a director like mm-hmm. Rob directed his own movie funded his own movie wrote it and we had a movie premiere and over 400 people showed yeah, up the part was like, it was nuts yeah, yeah. and we wasn't expecting <laughs> it like we had a moment together and it was like wow we was not expecting this he's, he's been um, accepted in different film festivals. He won film festivals. Now we're going to the next level. So mm-hmm. it's like you want to utilize your talents. Like you can be talented on Instagram, but there's other stuff that you're very, very interested in doing. Like Rob's a director. He's a creator. Like um, he wants to make that those movies like um, like um, Us and uh, what was the other movie that was directed by the same um, um, Get Out. Get Out. Yeah. Like he he likes those types of movies. So he wants to create those movies. But yeah, doing panels. Um, like Rob and I have done panels, interviews like this. Um, so it's just you want to do more than just be on Instagram because you want your your brand. My whole deal, my whole plan for them is to go beyond Instagram and to help them become a household name. Mm-hmm. That's that's the whole goal. Okay, okay. Um, I'm even always talking about artists how because of the way the internet is, artists today are you know, pretty much going through the same process as influencers. Like, you both are, or you all are people who are trying to make a living from producing content, putting that content in front of your, your relevant audience, and then, you know, hopefully monetizing the audience and then rinsing and repeating the process. So are there things that you've kind of noticed from watching your clients grow? Because I know you mentioned earlier, like, Robbie really studies Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like, he really studies it. Are there things that you've seen that kind of help with the growth process outside of just, you know, saying stay consistent and make content for your audience or that like any extra things that, that that you coach them on doing to help themselves grow like a lot of your newer clients or anything yeah just um really just being sociable mm. um networking getting out more talking to the right people um go to events so that's so critical mm. is you whatever industry you're in there are big events that are centered around the industry that you need to be at yeah music industry we don't care if it's a3c music festival um whatever it is like birthday bash like concerts like 
all of us have done that. We've went because Rob's face card is so strong nowadays. We can have a regular ticket and we end up backstage. Mm. I will have other influences who are not as big and they still end up backstage yeah. and they get one connect and that connect can change their entire life. So it's really just go to, you have to go to, I tell artists this all the time. Like, you, 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 did you go to this event? No, I ain't know about it. How? That's the, one of the biggest music events in Atlanta. Yeah. And you didn't go? Um, you didn't go to this festival? Like, even you didn't go to Texas for that event? Like, you gotta be social. You gotta go to the events. You gotta, you know, reach out to people, email people. Um, DM people you never know what actually works so it's just getting out more networking um, and reaching out to those who can help you with what you do okay okay I'm um, sorry is there any last advice that you want to give the music artists who are looking to start their own influencer campaigns to kind of hop into that world like any last pieces of advice you would give them um really too like a lot of the artists can become influencers but really what they need to do one thing that a lot of artists do is they oversaturate their page with music, mm. posting, you know, uh, mixtape covers. Like, don't do that. Mm. D find different ways to promote your music. Have someone record you in the studio, you going crazy to your own song, really crazy, really lit, it don't matter. Dancing to your song, vibing to your song, and then you post it. That's how you do it. And get other people to do it. Get girls to do it. You know, that's how you could you find other creative ways to promote the music. Pay an influencer. It don't have to be no influencer. It could just be regular people mm -hmm. that make uh, Triller or TikTok um, videos to your song. Repost them on your page. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you can get your exposure. As an artist, people buy you as a as as talent. They they want to they want you so necessarily not just the music but you are to, you have to basically perform get on instagram post videos of you talking talk your crap you know <laughs> whatever it is you do put more of you on social media mm. and i'm telling you that will change everything make sure that your pictures look good if you, if you got an android ask somebody else to take who who got an iphone who got the, the max <laughs> you know ask somebody else you don't gotta have no million dollar red cam <laughs> Make sure that the lens is clean before you post. <laughs> so make sure it's clean, then make sure your page looks nice, and then everything will go up from there. Okay, okay, bet, man. Um, let everybody know where they can find you if they want to reach out to you. Uh, I know you said your DMs are crazy, but just let them know where they can come find you. At. Well, yeah, definitely. You can uh, DM me um, at Young Gun CEO, or you can just simply go to KeithDorsey.com, and all my information is there. And I'll make sure to put that information on the screen for you guys. And as always, man, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you guys to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey. This is my guy Keith, man, and I'll holler at y'all next time.